We have got a ton of leaks and ton of rumors thanks to Bloomberg's Mark Gurman who has detailed a bunch of stuff that we should expect coming to the three major operating systems at Worldwide Developers Conference. If you're excited for it, keep in mind we are selling these limited edition designs, kind of a Talosiv style approach to the Worldwide Developer Conference event invites that went out to people earlier. There's all kinds of Easter eggs hidden within it, whether it be future iPhone designs, anti-pixel pictures, and all kinds of great stuff like that. It'll be available for the entire month of May and then it is gone. But without further ado, let's go into all the details we should expect for both watchOS, macOS, and the big kahuna iOS 13. So in the spirit of kind of saving the best for last, I thought today we could start out with watchOS 6 because as we have a lot of expectations and we have a lot of hope for iOS, every year I'm always wondering how are they gonna top watchOS because there's really only so much you could do with this wearable, but it is one of the most common, if not the most common smartwatch on the market. So the changes coming to watchOS are going to affect a huge amount of people, starting with a dedicated app store that will be accessible to the Apple Watch itself. So currently, if you want to install apps on your Apple Watch, you have to go to that section of the Apple Watch app on your iPhone and typically developers have to make an iOS version of an app that also supports the watchOS app whereas perhaps if Mark Gurman is correct watchOS 6 will result in you being able to bypass that so you don't necessarily need to download the iOS version of an app you'll be able to download apps directly to the Apple Watch with the Apple Watch and Apple's likely to be kicking off this new app store with a few of their own design apps so expect apps that are going to be built into watchOS 6 by default being the calculator app, which a lot of people have been asking for for a long time, a voice memos app, which I'm unsure if that's recording audio via your Apple Watch, which probably would kill the battery very quickly, or does that mean just being able to access the voice memos that you have on your iPhone so that you can play them off your Apple Watch if you have AirPods connected to them or something like that. Also, the books app, which no, I don't think that means you'll be able to read books on the Apple Watch, that would be quite impractical, but it's more about adding the option for audiobooks. So if you don't have your iPhone with you, but you want to listen to an audiobook you have, you'll be able to connect AirPods to your Apple Watch and listen to it that way. He also detailed that we should expect different doses or cycle features coming to the Apple Watch for people who need to be taking pills or medication on a consistent schedule. You'll be able to add that into the Apple Watch so that it'll ping you or remind you when it's time to take your pill for whatever purpose you may need it for. The Apple Watch is supposed to help with that consistency. Take your meds now. And of course, with any watchOS upgrade, new watch faces. This is not a surprise, but he went into details on what the new watch faces should be, which includes two new extra large clock faces, which usually just involve huge text so that people with not very good vision are able to see what time it is from a long distance away from the watch face, as well as new custom gradient design watch faces. There's no leak suggesting third-party watch faces are coming, but still better watch faces and new customizations for the watch face with new complications that'll work on your current modular watch faces. So overall, they're paying attention to that as well. And he also said, and emoji and memoji sticker support will be coming over to the Apple Watch so it syncs up with whatever emojis and memojis you have with your iPhone. You're not going to be able to make them on the Apple Watch because there's no Face ID sensors or anything, but just a little bit more consistency between those two devices experience. Now next, we've talked a little bit about Mac OS, but he did confirm some more of those details, including thanks to Marzipan apps, it'll be easier for people who are designing an app for the iPad to port it over to Mac OS much, much easier, which our own app developer is hoping to do with the Talos Fab layer but I'm sure tons of other developers out there are going to easily port their apps that they designed for the iPad over to the Mac thanks to the next version of Mac OS. And that of course is going to be conjoined with Apple's own custom apps that are going to be breaking apart iTunes in a lot of ways. So the Apple Music app will be coming to Mac, the Podcasts app, plus the Find My iPhone or Find My Friends apps that you've had on iPhones for a long time. They're kind of merging those with iOS 13, which we'll talk about in a second, but that app will also be available on the Mac as well. Thankfully, they're going to be adding iMessage screen and animations and stickers that we've had on iOS ever since iOS 10. All of those iMessage intricate unique animations that you can have between the screen all changing to different colors or fireworks. Thankfully they're finally bringing that to the Mac and he also says we should expect to see screen time features as well as Siri shortcuts brought to the Mac which the amount of things people have been able to produce thanks to Siri shortcuts on iOS has been insane and I can't wait to see what people are going to be able to come with once they bring Siri shortcuts to the Mac because there's so much more you can do on the Mac as well. Now moving on 
to the big one, which luckily has the most amount of features that Mark Gurman has detailed. iOS 13, what should you be expecting? Well, for the fourth or fifth time now, he once again is confirming there will be a dark mode brought to iOS 13, and luckily it will be a toggle accessible via control center, which means it'll be very, very simple for people to just turn on dark mode if it's later at night by default, and there's even a chance that you'll be able to schedule it just like you schedule night shifts. So after a certain amount of time, your iPhone can switch back to light mode, and then once the sun goes down, it can switch back to dark mode. Or you can have it on at all times, it'll be customizable, but yes, thankfully, dark mode is finally coming to iOS. He also talked about a revamped version of the Messages app, which will allow you to, sort of like WhatsApp, have a customizable profile that involves you having your own custom profile picture, a display name, and what people are able to see that personal information, which I think is a great idea because currently, when you add other people's phone numbers via iMessage, it defaults to just their initials and not an actual picture of them. If they update iMessage in this way, that would mean that if you added someone via iMessage, their contact photo that they set up for themselves will automatically show up on everyone else's devices. That way, you don't have to worry about updating everyone's picture in your contact list. They can customize that themselves and probably make the Messages app look a lot more consistent, opposed to you trying to take a picture for every single contact you have, them setting up themselves. Good idea. He also talked about a new system-wide sleep mode, which will involve turning on Do Not Disturb at a certain time when you know it's that bedtime part of the day, darkening the lock screen, muting all notifications, and once again, something that you'll be able to toggle via control center when it's near the end of the day. You may be wrapping up some things, so you don't want any more distractions to keep you on your phone longer. As Tim Cook has said in multiple interviews, he's encouraging people to try to put their phone down and they really want to try to battle smartphone addiction, which there's only so many things iOS can do to prevent you from staying on your phone, but Tim sees this as worth trying. He also said something that I found kind of interesting for iOS. He talked about the default keyboard having an option for essentially SwiftKey, which has been an option on Android phones for a long time. And there's also lots of third-party keyboards that already support this, but Apple's likely seeing a ton of people interested in being able to swipe around the keyboard between the different keys to spell out letters rather than just tapping every single button. They're seeing the popularity of that, and now it's possible they'll build in their own native way to do that with the iOS app. Maybe it's a feature that's on by default, but regardless, Apple sees the popularity of that, and they want to start building it directly into iOS 13, which is kind of neat. And as we talked about earlier, they will be combining the Find My iPhone and Find My Friends app into one single app that I guess lets you see where your friends are and lets you see where your devices are at the same time, which I'm always for, trying to be minimal and trying to not have multiple apps for all these different things, trying to combine them for functionality, I'm totally for seeing. And he also mentioned something I haven't heard of before. He's saying the user interface is being tweaked a little bit for multitasking and the way you dismiss apps. So whether or not this will be the year we get that option to close all apps at once, which Apple's always said that's not good because it kills your battery faster, but I don't care. It's just an OCD thing. I don't like having all those apps running in the background. And he also said, which we have heard in the past, that they will be making a lot of tweaks to the home screen on the iPad. So maybe that means bringing different widgets or different tiles so that it's not just apps on the home screen of the iPad, given you have so much screen real estate to work with. But that also reminds me, he said widgets will be getting an upgrade to make them look a little bit more clean and fresh. He doesn't have specific examples, but he's just saying the widgets are getting redesigned as well as a bunch of other apps. Revamped mail app that will allow you to mute individual threads or block certain people. A revamped health app to showcase daily activity or tracking for people who have certain conditions or need to take different pills depending on what time of the month it is. They're trying to build that into the health app as well. And they're also revamping the maps app. So it'll be easier to set frequent locations, whether it be work addresses or home addresses, as well as improve grouping of certain locations when you take pictures there. So there's also revamps coming to iBooks, coming to reminders that he all detailed. So it sounds like if Mark Gurman ends up being correct, that there are a ton of changes you should be expecting with iOS 13, not just for the iPad now. And I desperately really, really hope that this guy ends up being correct because if what he's promising happens, iOS 13 seems to be a fairly major redesign for not just the iPad, but also the iPhone as well. I'm also excited to see the standalone app store we'll be getting for watchOS 6 that will allow the Apple Watch to download apps directly, finally getting a native calculator app support, all the series shortcuts bringing to the Mac. I think they're going to have a plenty of stuff to talk about a worldwide developers conference. And there's even a little glimpse of hope that they'll talk a little bit more about the modular Mac Pro, maybe making an official announcement of when it'll be available or what the design looks like. And if not that, perhaps definitely an unveiling of their new standalone monitor, which Quo says would be around 32 inches at a 6K resolution. But given there wasn't hardware 
hardware at the event last year, I think that makes it more likely that there will be hardware at the event this year because Worldwide Developers Conference showcasing hardware is usually kind of hit or miss. They do it some years, but not all. And the fact we didn't get it last year, I think, points to the idea that it could very well happen this year. This is going to be a very packed full keynote, and hopefully it's not all about Apple TV+, Plus because I couldn't give a crap about that. I don't care about Apple News+. Plus. I'm already getting annoyed when browsing the Apple News app, and it constantly has this pop-up that says, you can read the rest of this article if you subscribe to Apple News+. Plus. I'm like, oh god, here we are, here we go again. Debating signing up for it just to get rid of the pop-ups, but that's just stupid, man. No, it's not worth it. What are you guys most excited for when it comes to iOS 13, watchOS 6, and macOS 10.15? I want to hear what you guys are looking forward to down in the comments below. Do you guys believe Mark Gurman? Do you think these reports are accurate? To me, they sound fairly legit because it doesn't sound like he's just writing a wish list. These sound very, very specific and very, very unique features that a lot of people wouldn't just put on their wish list. I feel like he's got a legitimate inside source. And can you guys believe it? In less than a month, we will be running iOS 13 developer betas on all of our iOS devices. For those of you who are in the developer beta program, we got less than a month until our entire phone and iPad library gets completely revamped. And I, for one, am very, very excited to test it out. Thank you guys for watching. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I will see you in the next one.